Good morning. Uh, my name is Kevin Smith. It is a privilege to be with you here this morning at today's superintendent's breakfast. I am really grateful that so many of you have chosen to spend your morning with us supporting the Lynchburg City Schools. In fact, your presence here is really a testament to this community's support of public education in general. So please look around you. Please look at everybody in the room today because gathered here in this room are the resources that make, make things possible for Lynchburg City Schools and continue the tradition of excellence. We have the intellectual, the economic, financial, social, political, and community power to do things for the Lynchburg City Schools. In fact, I would say, really, the Lynchburg City Schools could do anything with the people in this room right here, right now. So with that, notwithstanding my efforts to keep you all quiet and convene you, I encourage you to circulate and talk with each other, because if we can match needs with resources, this will be time well spent indeed. The Lynchburg City Schools Ed Foundation is an organization committed to advancing excellence and equity in the Lynchburg City Schools through advocacy and educational funding. We do this by supporting and creating innovative educational programs that go above and beyond public funding for our schools. As three examples of what the Ed Foundation does, this year alone, the Ed Foundation has already provided almost $90,000 in innovation classroom grants to the Lynchburg City School teachers. These grants create uh, educational opportunities and learning experiences for our students of all learning styles, starting from preschool, running all the way through our city's high schools. And we have 67 business and individual sponsors who provide the funds that allow for these educational experiences to occur. Secondly, the Ed Foundation provides scholarships to students of the Lynchburg City Schools, both while they're in school and for post-secondary education. The Candler Opportunity Fund is a great example of in-school support. This fund provides money for students who are admitted to programs within the city schools for whom you know, financial resources may be a burden to participate. Additionally, a very generous donation from the Strubance Foundation has made our scholarship offerings even stronger. This has offered students with interest in the career trades and the trade careers uh, opportunities through the Strubance Foundation. And lastly, thanks to generous donations from the business community and individuals in the community, the Lynchburg City Schools Excellence in Science Scholarship is back. This provides $30,000 to the top science student of the Lynchburg City Schools for post-secondary education. Lastly, the Ed Foundation also provides classroom materials to teachers free of charge. In fact, the Tools for Schools Warehouse provides free resources to teachers who need educational materials. It does more than that, though. It also provides backpacks and educational supplies to students in financial need, so that that way everybody can start the school year with the supplies they need for academic success. So far this year alone, the Lynchburg City Schools Ed Foundation has helped almost 1,200 students. And that's just some of what the Ed Foundation does. And a lot of that has to do with your presence and support and generosity here. A lot of it also has to do with the quiet work that gets done behind the scenes by our executive director, our employee, and the trustees. So if I could please ask our executive director extraordinaire and bell provider, Jody Gillette, to please stand. And also Tracy Baker to please stand, our Tools for Schools volunteer. And also the trustees, please stand. Yes, and if you, could keep, if you could keep standing for the trustees, because you know, some of you know most or all of these people who are now standing in front of you, and if you have any questions about how you can help the Lynchburg City Schools, please talk to them, talk to me. We'd be more than happy to spend time talking with you. So thank you. This event is one of my favorites. It really is a privilege to be the president of the Ed Foundation, and I particularly like this event for two reasons. The first is that it really celebrates an area where two different groups can get together and agree. That's the business community and the community in general. And that's because strong public schools really lead to strong economic development and also stronger communities. Second, I particularly like this event because it really gives us an opportunity to say thank you back to you, the community, as well as the educators of our children. In fact, I think we would be remiss if we did not call out teachers and administrators and staff specifically to say, Thank you for the job you do with our children. You're doing a great job. And speaking of thank yous, I would now like to acknowledge this year's lead sponsors. Uh, I'll rattle them off quickly so we can stay on time, but we really appreciate the generous support of Amazement Square, Anthem, BB&T, Berglund Toyota, Centra, Dominion 7 Architects, Fleet Laboratories, Humankind, MH Masonry, Piedmont Community Health Plan, and the University of Lynchburg, who again is allowing us to use these beautiful facilities. So thank you. 
We also want to thank our 53 table sponsors whose names appear in your program in front of you now. So before we get started, though, there are a couple of administrative things. First, please fill out the registration cards on the table in front of you. This way we can mail you an invitation for next year's breakfast with a superintendent. And additionally, a catering staff member will come to your table and direct you when it's time to go to the buffet line. Uh, and as a sign of the times, we have hand sanitizer at the front of the buffet line. Uh, I encourage you to use that. That's not a joke. There's no, no joke intended here. Please, uh, please use the hand sanitizer as you go through the line. Our theme this year is I Am Lynchburg, and this program highlights some of the lesser known school programs that help our students become successful citizens. We'll start today's program with one example. Each year, Randolph College hosts a science festival called SciFest. As part of SciFest, there is a poetry contest where students from across the Lynchburg City Schools are invited to submit poetry for SciFest. We will kick off today's event with two students who will be reading their poetry submissions from last year's SciFest. If I could ask them to come up. My name is Madison Coghill and I am Lynchburg. This is my poem titled, Just a Little Dot. A number to the left, a number to the right, all I see are numbers, but that's okay, it's fine with me. After all, I'm just a dot you see. I'm not too special unless you look at me a little differently. I can just be a dot some days. I'm a spot, I'm in between different numbers every day. I have whole numbers to my right, but I split them from um, other numbers that I meet. I see tens, hundreds, thousands more, all to the left, right next door. It's not too hard to figure me out if you already know a little about me. To my left, I have smaller numbers. You see, I have tens, hundreds, thousands, like I said before. They're little tiny pieces of a whole number. It's kind of an honor, but that's just me. I love my place and all the numbers I meet every day, but sometimes I wish I was more than a little mark, you know, just to switch it around a bit, of course. I am a decimal dot. My name is Sadie Heidman, and I am Lynchburg. The title of my poem is Science. Scientists are artists, their minds are their paint, their memory is their canvas, their pencil is their brush, curiosity is their inspiration, and science is their style. Scientists are musicians, their minds are their instrument, their memory is their note, their pencil is their chord, curiosity is their pitch, and science is their song. Scientists are scientists, helping the world every day with studies about amazing and unknown things. Scientists are elements of this world in the Tesla toils of wonder. Good morning. I am Susan Morrison, and I'm the chair of the Lynchburg City School Board. I, along with the other eight members of the LCS board, want to thank each of you for not only being here this morning, but for your continuous support of the LCS Education Foundation. We as a board and a school community are facing significant and often overwhelming challenges. Violence, poverty, hunger, discipline, staff shortages, equity barriers, unfunded or underfunded government mandates, mental and physical health concerns, and social media are a few of the challenges that we are facing as we try to educate our students. The importance of our partners, like the LCS Foundation, is critical to our ability to be successful. We cannot do this alone. Let me repeat that. We cannot do this alone. We are grateful to Mrs. Gillette and the LCS Education Foundation for the generous support to our staff through grants and tools and to our students through scholarships. We are forever grateful. We are also grateful to have Dr. Crystal Edwards as our superintendent to help us reach our goal for every child from pre-K to graduation and beyond. She is also affectionately known as Superintendo by some of the students. Dr. Edwards, Dr. Edwards, thank you for all that you do and will do. <laughs> thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for having breakfast with me this morning. It's my favorite breakfast. I don't have to cook or do anything and have all these guests. So welcome, welcome. Um, thank you for being here. But more importantly, 
Thank you for supporting my kids. Um, as Ms. Morrison said, there are some challenges that we face, but every day there's another reason to put a big smile on this face. And our students are absolutely amazing. And when you think about the challenges that they face and the fact that they overcome, persevere, and they succeed in spite of what's going on in their lives, you really have to be very, very proud of our students. So I am here today to be very proud of my students and to really show you some amazing things today as we go on with our theme. But before I get started in my, my quick intro, I have some special thank yous that I need to give. Um, first, I'd like to thank my school board for being here with me and being supportive. And there are days when we used to have 30-minute meetings and now they're about four or five hours. They stay in there with me. They hang in there and do the good work for not one single penny. So thank you for your hard work and talent for working with us. Um, in the room at the tables, you will notice some of my principals, my directors, my supervisors, coordinators, teachers, educators are here with us too. And they too are the hardest working, most committed people I know. When you say, what are your hours? They say, start to finish. That's what their day is like. So thank you to them. I'd also like to thank my city leadership who is here in front of me, Mayor Tweedy, Vice Mayor Mary Jane Dolan, Councilman Nelson, Councilman Perro, Councilman Wilder, Councilman Wright. Um, Councilman Helgelson could not be here, but he gives his regrets. We also have representation from Senator Kane's office, Senator Warner's office, Senator Klein's office. We have our city manager, Ms. Svercek, um, our deputy city manager, Mr. Wodica, assistant city manager, John Hughes. We have representation from our police department, our police chief, Ryan Zudema, our sheriff's department, Sheriff Sloan, saw him, up there he is, but Sheriff Sloan is back there, as well as our economic development authority. Uh, I saw Marjette Upshore somewhere in the room over here, and Mark Strassner. <laughs> Neither. Um, so it is great to have, in addition to the school board, the school employees, so many representatives from our city, because as Ms. Morrison said, we are all partners in this and we cannot do this alone. So thank you all for being here with us as well. And then finally, one special thank you um, to uh, someone who I am a big fan of, who we have a lot in common, although I was not an astronaut, but chemistry, perseverance, and that's Mr. Leland Melvin, who has joined us. He is a Heritage graduate, and he <laughs> makes us proud as well. So thank you for joining us here today. So our theme today is I am Lynchburg, and that's personal to my heart because when I came down from New Jersey, you can imagine a whole bunch of people from New Jersey ask me, talk about your kids, describe your kids. If you could use one word to describe your students, what would it be? And I actually struggled, and my word is everything. My students are everything. And there is just so much talent. Last night I was at EC Glass National Honor Society, which was totally run by the students, and I had the best time hanging out with our kids because they are just that talented, passionate, empathetic, caring, and kind. So when I think about our kids, and I think about the theme, I am Lynchburg, who better to tell the story about Lynchburg City Schools than Lynchburg City School students. And I'm not talking your top students, although I love my top students as well, and we will have a seniors honors dinner to recognize them, thank you, Ed Foundation. But today is just about everyday kids, everyday kids doing extraordinary things. So today you're, gonna, you're in for a treat because you're gonna see what that looks like when we have just everyday kids doing extraordinary things. And I have some folks here to help me. Um, my master, master, mistress of ceremonies 
is another person that I'm a huge fan of. Um, unfortunately, she is retiring this year. Um, after 32 years of dedicated service to our students and the education here at Lynchburg City Schools, um, when I talk to students about Miss Nelson, they're so funny because they say, she don't play. Miss Nelson, don't, she don't play. But she cares about me. She knows my family. I like her. She's funny. She lets us do fun things. And when you think about the leadership of a building, uh, and because that's what sets the tone in the building, you want the best person in that building. You want a Miss Karen Nelson leading your building. You want someone who is not only principal, but who is mom, nurse, sometimes the, the judge, jury, court. Um, she's that person that kids lean on. She's that person that staff lead, leans on. She is a supporter. She builds you up. She builds me up. And she's just a great friend and a great colleague. So I am happy to invite to the podium Miss Karen Nelson, our Mistress of Ceremony. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. Good morning. Though I did not grow up in Lynchburg, I'm proud to say that I am as much a product of Lynchburg City Schools as the students we serve. This is because of the opportunities that have been provided to me by the school division, opportunities that have resulted in personal and professional growth, opportunities that have changed the trajectory of my career and enriched my life in ways that I could not have imagined 32 years ago. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this morning. As the principal of a school that has benefited greatly from this foundation's support over the years, I want to express my gratitude to the Lynchburg Education Foundation. Each year, the teachers at Perrymont are required to review our needs assessment and our school improvement plan and develop and submit grant proposals to the Lynchburg Education Foundation. We are fortunate to have received full funding for many of the proposals that we have submitted, proposals that enabled us to offer opportunities that helped us better meet the needs of our students. Next year's grant application window is already open. I challenge the principals and teachers in this audience to return to your schools collaborate with the groups you represent, and require every grade level, every department, to submit a grant proposal to the Lynchburg Education Foundation. Proposals that will help us to continue to provide opportunities that facilitate and enhance learning. We are very excited today to showcase some of the incredible programs that we have here in Lynchburg City Schools. As you walked through the lobbies today, you probably got a glimpse of some of the work our teachers are doing with their students. Did you check out the beautiful artwork created by the Heritage High School art students that is on display? A sincere thank you to Heritage High School art teacher John Rourke and Dr. Ruth Gaze for sharing their students' work with us today. During the 2017-2018 school year, the students at Heritage High School were challenged to create a memory project based on the African-American history of Lynchburg. The show was hung at the Academy Center of the Arts on Main Street in June of 2018 and at the Legacy Museum of African-American History for the entire summer of 2019. It contains approximately 75 portraits. Because of the very positive response to that show, in early July of 2018, the Academy commissioned a follow-up show on the subject of Juneteenth, and that show hung at the Academy for the month of June 2019. The samples here today are selections from the two shows. The plan is to frame all of these pieces and use them as visual resources for the LCS community in teaching our community history, as well as the larger story of the African-American experience in the United States. Thank you, John Rourke and Dr. Ruth Gaze. 
Some of you may not know that funding through 21st Century Community Learning Center grants helps schools, two, I'm sorry, six elementary and two middle schools to extend the school day before and after school three, four, five, even six days per week and into June long after the regular calendar has come to an end. Let's take a look at some of the extended learning opportunities offered before and after school through the 21st Century Community Learning Center grant programs at two of our elementary schools, Heritage Elementary and Lincoln Elementary. 21st Century Community Learning Center grants are competitive grants and in Lynchburg we're very fortunate that we have eight schools that we are able to have this funding for and these programs just, are, the main focus is supporting state and local standards with reading and math and also being able to provide parent engagement um, and enrichment opportunities for, for students and, um, and their parents. At Heritage Elementary we have morning fitness every day um, for one hour, Monday through Friday. On Monday and Tuesday, we do reading remediation. Wednesdays, we do math remediation. Thursdays, our enrichment day, so we provide activities. They can choose from cool science, um, clay clubs, Legos, girls on the run, drum and flag. So they have a vast number of programs they can choose from. This provides an opportunity that they would not get during the regular school day that um, they can go and do cooking and photography and Girls on the Run. Girls on the Run is a girls empowerment program for girls that are age 8 to 13. It usually runs elementary level 3rd, 4th, and 5th. It gives girls um, skills to help them cope with bullying but also giving them self-confidence strategies to help them with problem solving. I think for our girls, it means community. They are able to learn from each other, not just within their grade level, but because it's third, fourth, and fifth, they learn what the experience of older students who may have a different way to look at things. And it also um, gives them something to work towards because in the season we have a 5K and the families love it and so do the girls suggest come together and push each other to do new things and learn things in a different way. If it was not for 21st Century, these girls could not participate in this program because 21st Century covers the cost for our students. And a program without them covering that cost would not exist because it is a costly program. So this is helping Lincoln Elementary students have access to resources, um, that we normally wouldn't be able to use consistently every school day, technology that we wouldn't always have access to during the school day, um, but it's also helping impact their test scores and show growth in academic areas such as reading and math. We're really fortunate that a lot of our teachers that teach at the school um, actually are instructors within the program, so the students have established relationships there, but we're also able to bring in people from the community to teach classes, and so um, it's nice to have that balance of people that they know and are familiar with but also within the community working with our students and exposing them to new activities, new ideas. I think it's uh, really great for them to be able to use some of these uh, tools, basically professional level tools that they wouldn't normally have access to uh, at this age. They end up kind of exploring their creativity in different ways. Um, we actually kind of open it up where they have a lot of different projects and then at the end of the semester we usually do an art show. Um, which they get to have their work up um, either in one of the spaces or the hallway here um, and we have a big opening on First Friday um, which brings in a lot of the kids who maybe haven't been to art galleries, maybe even their parents haven't been to art galleries before and just trying to kind of get that experience and bring them out into the community a little bit while we're kind of connecting with them. We're trying to build capacity building with parents. How can we help you and your child at home? When you go home, what are some things? So some schools are doing some make it take it activities. We're doing um, family game nights. Family game nights where you can sit down with a board game and have a conversation, having dialogue, working and being together, and it's family time. This year so far we've already served over 180 students here at Heritage Elementary through one program or another. Um, with the Heritage Elementary Grant, 
Uh, we wrote the grant so we do target the students that need remediation, but we also target students that may not need reading or math help, but they, you know, want the enrichment activities. Once we can spark that interest, it's going to go back to the classroom and we're going to see that increase in student achievement because they're going to want to grow. They're going to want to be there at school. It's going to help. They want to go to school so that they can go and do the fun things that are in after school time. At this time, I'd like to introduce Amanda Myers Ramirez, the lead instructor for our Centra Project Search Program, who can tell you about this incredible program that helps our students learn vocational skills and supports them in gaining meaningful employment. Thank you so much. It's been a couple years since I've attended, and I forgot how big this room is. <laughs> um, it is truly such an honor to be here today. The I Am Lynchburg theme resonates with me. I genuinely love our community. My husband and I are both proud Lynchburg City School employees and have been for nearly two decades. Our children are fortunate to attend two of our Lynchburg City Schools. I know how much good is coming out of our schools daily, so it's humbling for me to have this opportunity to share a small piece of our amazing Central Project Search program with you this morning. Project Search is an internationally recognized vocational training program for young adults with disabilities. Project Search, Project Search utilizes a curriculum model with over 20 years of successfully proven outcomes and currently has about 500 programs worldwide. Many project search programs, like ours, are housed at major hospital networks here in the United States. Five years ago, Lynchburg City Schools partnered with Campbell County Schools, the Department of Aging and Rehabilitative Services, Stand Up, and our host business, Centra, to, inform, to form our program. We currently have about 28 various internships around Lynchburg General Hospital, the Dawson Inn, and the Allen B. Pearson Cancer Center. Over our four years of serving students, we have close to a 100% success rate at, successful, at placing students into the community for their jobs. I just want to repeat that again because I kind of stuttered a little bit, but almost a 100% success rate at placing these young adults in the community with jobs. Thank you. Um, the goal for our program is a simple one, but one that requires intentionality, teamwork from our stakeholders, and most importantly, a commitment from our students. Purely stated, it is meaningful, competitive employment in an integrated workplace. Meaningful work, personal work, valuable work, earning a fair and liv livable competitive wage. This may seem basic, but for many young people with disabilities, this goal is one that has traditionally brought barriers and obstacles. We are so proud of our program and its success in helping our students navigate these barriers and obstacles so that they can have the success in the community that they deserve. Our Centra Project Search program also fits nicely into this theme, I am Lynchburg, um, not just because we are deeply vested in our Lynchburg community, but because we share a mission for seeing lifelong success for our students. You are about to see a video about our program and showcases some of our current students hard at work in their internships and some of our graduates who have already started their career path in the workforce. Although I think the video speaks for itself, I wanted to share a few closing takeaways. On the surface, it seems like Project Search is a program for people with disabilities. However, the more you learn about our interns and our mission, the more you see that at our core, we are a program that celebrates ability. None of you today are successful in your careers because of your weaknesses. You are successful because of your strengths. It's our hope as a program that other employers, potential employers in the community, see the potential strengths in our students also. Through the success of each of our interns placed into jobs in our community, we are changing stigmas, workplaces are becoming more inclusive, and we are showing the community that the only disability is not working hard and believing that all things are possible. 
I want to thank Dr. Edwards for this honor to be able to present this morning. Thank you so much to our school board and the Education Foundation for your continued support of our program. And thank you to our partners in this program, Centra, who's here today, Campbell County Schools, the Department of Aging and Rehabilitative Services, and Stand Up. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. As a post-grad, I wanted to come back just to give me an opportunity to learn more about Lynchburg General and how, how they running things. Precious Church was awesome. And I meet some new friends and work really hard and learn everything around the hospital. Well, well, I have to say, Project Search has been the most perfect place for me to be in. And if for, for me being in three internships in a day, oh yeah, it's really been the most a good time for me. Both my internships have been in nutrition services as a prep, doing prep work and working at the grill. And my plan after Project Search is to get a job in food service and then later down the road, open my own restaurant. My job now is ambassador, and I like working ambassador, working really hard, and check on patients' bracelets, trying to make them feel happy and don't get scared or worried. Well, I'm doing as a, a, a plant engineering, um, as a, a, a mechanic assistant. I've been doing this for about two years now and uh, I've been really going real good. I learned that I, would like, I like helping patients. I like being in a healthcare setting. I would really love to go work at Guggenheimer or any type of nursing home, just because I like working with the elderly, give them some care and love, because people do forget about them, but I want to be there just to brighten up their day. Project Church has done above and beyond to help me. It gave me a lot of experience and know-how in the job field I want to go into. Yeah, I really um, enjoyed being here, you know, trying to learn the jobs. And um, it, it was really amazing being here. I am Lynchburg. I am Lynchburg. I am Lynchburg. I am Lynchburg. It is clear that Project Search has strong ties to the community that allows students to learn firsthand about careers through meaningful internships. Our teachers recognize the importance, even at the elementary level, of helping students experience the real life application of what they are learning. At T.C. Miller School for Innovation, art teacher and director Sean Lipscomb implemented a school-wide unit of study in all grade levels focusing on architecture and community planning and design as potential art careers. The owner and a lead designer from Architectural Partners, a local architectural firm, visited each of Mrs. Lipscomb's fourth and fifth grade classes and demonstrated the detailed step-by-step -step design process. Mrs. Lipscomb's fourth grade cla classes then designed and created working lighthouse lamps, and the fifth grade classes designed and built birdhouses. Mrs. Lipscomb's advanced students drew elevations for their designs and painted a neighborhood mural. Examples of their work, including the lighthouses, birdhouses, and elevation drawings, are on display in the lobby to my left. Their murals are currently on display in two locations, the Longwood Center of Visual Arts in Farmville, Virginia, and the Academy of Arts in Lynchburg. Thank you, Sean Lipscomb. <laughs> now I'd like to introduce Dr. Bradley Bryant, our Career and Technical Education Supervisor, who will tell you about the course offerings available at our middle and high schools that help to prepare students for a variety of careers.
Lynchburg City Schools offers career exploration courses in all of our middle schools in the subjects of technology education, family and consumer sciences, and keyboarding and computers. Our high school career and technical programs offer in-depth insight and training in business education, marketing, technology and robotics, and the trade areas of machining, architectural drafting, automotive technology, and culinary arts. May, you may have seen our amazing work by Mr. Cody Ross, building trades instructor at Heritage High School on the way into the event. Uh, Mr. Ross and his classes have constructed in learning stations for plumbing and residential electricity so that students can practice and study these important skills. Uh, one, career one career field offered through Lynchburg City Schools provides pathways into the most important of all industries. It requires dedication, compassion, and broad scientific knowledge. I'm talking about the career pathways in the healthcare industry. Lynchburg City Schools offers course sequences in sports medicine, dental assisting, and nursing. Our students, for example, can graduate from high school with a certified nurse aide license and go directly into the workforce. While employed, the students can further their education by pursuing advanced degrees as an LPN, RN, physical therapist, or some other medical technical certification. One of our current students is on the path to, a success, to success as a healthcare professional. Lisa Wilkinson, the nurse aide instructor at Heritage High School, saw such potential in this 11th grader that she nominated this student for the Strubance Scholarship. Through the LCS Education Foundation, the Strubance Foundation awards scholarships annually to students who have been involved with their career and technical programs. Strubance scholarships are awarded to students who plan to continue their work in a career tech field, or as well as students who benefited from CTE courses and will continue their education in another degree field. If you look closely into your program, you will see Ms. Wilkinson and our next speaker. I am proud to welcome a nursing student, current Heritage High School junior, and your 2020 Struban Scholarship recipient, Kivana Woodcox. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Kavana Woodcox. I'm excited to be here to share my story, my dreams, and my journey with you. Because of Lynchburg City Schools, the Lynchburg City Schools Education Foundation, and the support from this great community as a whole, students like myself are taught that it is possible to achieve our dreams. When I was growing up back home in Reno, Nevada, my sister and I used to volunteer at the nursing homes with our grandmother. I remember when my sister and I used to perform for the residents. We would dance for them, sing for them, and we even did fashion shows for them. My sister and I loved volunteering at nursing homes because we loved to brighten the residents' day. One day when my grandma and I used to, grandmother and I were at the nursing home, I asked her a question. I said, Granny, why do we visit the residents in the nursing home? And it wasn't that I didn't enjoy conversating, conversing with the residents, I did, but I always wondered why. I will never forget what she told me and I still remember till this day. She said, Kavana, a lot of these residents don't have family members that come to visit them. Most of these residents don't have loved ones who communicate with them. Most of these residents feel as if their family has abandoned them but it is our job to let them know that they are loved. It is our job to let them know that they are not alone and that there are people who care about them. It is our job to let them know that, the, to let them know that their feelings and their emotions do matter. I will never forget the amount of times that I visited residents and was told by them that they haven't seen their family in years. This honestly broke my heart. Little did I know that this was exactly the moment in my life where I decided that I wanted to serve and help people. In addition to visiting residents in the nursing home, sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> I used to spend a lot of my time in medical facilities. When I was younger, my father used to be in the hospital a lot because of specific medical conditions. 
I remember being in the room with him and just having a desire to help him. Even though I didn't have the credentials to assist him in his recovery, I desired to help him in any possible way that I could. When I was at the hospital, I was so intrigued by the environment that medical professionals would work in on a daily basis. Truly, I enjoyed being present at the hospital. Some people may have wondered why I enjoyed being there, because it is a facility that exposes people to multiple illnesses, and it is a depressing de environment. However, I was able to focus on the positive, which was medical professionals working together to heal, to save, and to comfort people. I decided this is the environment where I want my career to be in. I knew that if I wanted to help people at the capacity that I desired to, I had to succeed in academics. The thing that made me focus on academics was that I really desired to make a difference in the world. I really wanted my actions and my successes to benefit other people instead of myself. Furthermore, I really wanted to set an example for future generations in my genealogy. I wanted to show people that no matter the barrier that they would face in school, they could conquer it and be successful. A lot of students believe that in order to receive good grades, they have to be smart, but that is an illogical fallacy. Honestly, I don't see myself as someone who's more intelligent or more special than anyone else. I see myself as every student, because every student it has the same potential Every student can succeed, every student can get good grades, every student can earn scholarships, and every student can demonstrate academic excellence. When I came to Lynchburg City Schools, I was given the opportunity to take advanced courses that continued to challenge me. I was excited to learn that there was a nurse aid class where I could exactly begin my medical studies while in high school. Ms. Wilkinson is an amazing instructor who has taught me and my fellow classmates about how to take blood pressure, how to do the abdominal thrusts, and how to properly care for patients. She also taught us about the importance of empathy. Every patient matters, their thoughts, their feelings, their families. Empathy and understanding kindness are a very important part of healing. Ms. Wilkinson, I want to thank you for everything you taught me so far, and also for the faith you have in me to nominate me for this year's Strohband Scholarship. Thinking back on that day when I was called into the Heritage High School Forum, not knowing what was going on and seeing all these people who came and showed up for me, I was speechless. This opportunity has been a blessing and a big boost for my education academic future. I'm also grateful that through Lynchburg City Schools, I was able to obtain an internship with the Women's Health of Central Virginia. They set this internship up for me based on my interest of becoming an OBGYN. As I stand here today, I want to thank you. I want to thank my teachers. I want to thank my school. I want to thank my family and friends. I want to thank my church. I want to thank Lynchburg for the faith you have shown in me. My faith has made me who I am today, and with your support, it will guide me on my career path of choice where life happens every day. I'm excited to get started. I'm excited for what's in store for my future. My name is Kavana Woodcox, and I am Lynchburg. Today, you've had a chance to see some of the opportunities that, are, that we offer to our students. Opportunities that help to raise student achievement, but that also give students a sense of belonging, that encourage them and support them as they follow their interests and develop their skills and abilities. Opportunities that help our students build resilience and that help them to be more willing to attempt difficult tasks and activities opportunities that let them know they are capable, opportunities that boost their confidence and that lead them to new possibilities, opportunities with strong community connections that help our students to see their future selves so that each and every student in Lynchburg City Schools can stand up here and say, I am Lynchburg. We want all of our students to take advantage of the opportunities available to them. We want to make sure that there's equity across our school division as to what we offer and when and where we provide access to these opportunities. 
We know that each day provides a new opportunity for our students to develop and grow. We are the deciding factor in whether or not students are able to take advantage of the opportunities that are offered to them. All of you in this audience are in a position to help us do this. When I was a teacher at Perrymont, we would start our day with a song. And I know my husband's sitting there so scared that I'm gonna sing, but I'm not. But it was a song that helped my students to begin the day in a positive way so that they were ready to embrace all of the opportunities, big and small, that were available to them each and every day in my classroom that helped them to see that each day is an opportunity for them to be their best selves. The message is simple but powerful. Have a good day. Make it worthwhile. Go out and laugh. Go out and sing. Go out and smile. Go out and do all you should. Go out and do something good. Have a good day. Learn how to live. Learn how to laugh. Learn how to love. Learn how to give. And when you do, then you can say, you had a fine, you had a good, you had a great day. Thank you for supporting our students and our schools and for helping us to provide high quality opportunities for student growth and enrichment. We hope all of you have a good day. And I am Lynchburg. Thank you. Dr. Edwards. I just want to echo what Karen has said about have a good day. And I hope that, you know, you had breakfast with the superintendent, but it wasn't about me today, y'all. It was about Kavana. And I think I told her when she got off the stage, I said, you nailed it. She really did a wonderful job of showcasing what I Am Lynchburg is all about. And it's not easy standing up here in front of all of you all. And she didn't have much time to prepare, um, but she was a trooper. But you, hopefully you can see her passion, her conviction, and just her general kindness, goodness, and empathy. I know when I'm in a nursing home, I'm gonna find out where she is, and that's where I'm going to be, because that is the kind of person that I want to take care of me in the future, and that is the product of Lynchburg City Schools. So again, I thank you for all of your support and I thank you for the opportunity to showcase just one of our gyms, Kavana, our project search program, all of our art and talent that we've had here today. That would not be possible without everyone. So once again, thank you, thank you for your investment in Lynchburg City Schools and I too am Lynchburg. <laughs> I get the great pleasure each year to, uh, to uh, close up this um, event. And I want to start this year by um, letting Kavana know that there are actually a few healthcare professionals in this room. Some nursing home um, uh, directors in this room. So I think you just knocked your first interview out of the park. So you should be good to go. <laughs> My name is Jody Gillette. I'm the director of the Lynchburg City Schools Education Foundation, and I do hope that you enjoyed this morning's event. I want to thank Dr. Edwards, Karen Nelson, and all of today's program participants, faculty and students alike, for their hard work to create a truly moving and insightful presentation into some outstanding LCS programs. Karen. Through today's presentation, you have shared just a glimpse into the myriad of opportunities a principal weaves into a school day to round out a successful educational experience for every student. You have truly lived the LCS mission to ensure that every child, by name and by need, gets to graduation and goes beyond. Schools should not do it, could not do it without community support, and schools could not do it without leaders like you. After 32 years in Lynchburg City Schools, you have announced that you will be retiring in June. We are grateful for your service and congratulate you on your retirement. And I will give you this envelope before you leave. 
It's small, but there's something nice in it. The Education Foundation works to advance excellence and equity in the Lynchburg City Schools through advocacy and educational funding. And this breakfast is one very important way that we advocate for our schools as it prepares a forum for you to stay informed. Our programs and this event would not be possible without your interest, commitment, and quite frankly, your financial support. This breakfast also would not be possible without the help of some other key people. Thank you to Dr. Edwards and her team, the Education Foundation Program Committee, Cindy Babb, who did the lion's share of implementing the vision and coordinating the message of all of today's speakers, Austin Journey, who generated today's videos, Scott Kirkwood, Andrew Wilde's photography, Lauren Ferry Merck and her U of L staff, Jacob Caldwell from Dominion 7, the Economic Development Department for the City of Lynchburg, Lynchburg Regional Business Alliance, Partners in Education, Tracy Baker, Ula Kaupi, and my Board of Trustees. I also want to thank Ken Guerin, who welcomes half of Lynchburg to this campus each year for this breakfast. Ken and Sheila have been regulars at this event, and we will miss you after your retirement this June. Please take the centerpieces to decorate your office, courtesy of our elementary art teachers and their students. They are indeed for the taking, and I love when I make my visits each year to see them decorating your offices, so please do take them. Thank you to all of today's sponsors for so generously supporting the mission of the Ed Foundation, including our lead sponsors once again, Amazement Square, Anthem, BB&T, Berglund Toyota, Centra, Dominion 7 Architects, Fleet Laboratories, Humankind, MH Masonry and Associates, Piedmont Community Health Plan, and the University of Lynchburg. LCS impacts economic, sorry, LCS impacts Lynchburg's economic health as it feeds the workforce pipeline. Opportunity Lynchburg has a series on their website titled, similarly to today's program, I Am Lynchburg that showcases some amazing people doing exciting work in our community who often reference programs and opportunities they gain through their education and related experiences. We have one last story to share with you today of a very recent LCS graduate who already owns her own successful business and who might be a great candidate to add to the Bank of Opportunity Lynchburg videos. My name is Whitney Nash. I went to Heritage High School. I was lucky enough to graduate with my cosmetology license, and now I'm an owner of a salon here in Lynchburg. Being able to complete my cosmetology program with Heritage was something that really prompted me to just grow my career even more. I was able to not only do practical, but technical work at Heritage as well, and I was able to graduate with the license before even graduating the school. It's life-changing. It really, really impacted my career. So it wasn't like I was searching for something to do once I got out of school. I was just able to jump straight into my field. I strongly recommend all of the CT programs that LCS has to offer because you can graduate and have a trait that you can go ahead and work on. Even if you're still going to college, you can pay off that college debt with a trait that you learned. It was easy for me to be able to say, I don't want to go off. I kind of want to just give back to the community that gave me so much and so much knowledge and love and compassion. I'm Whitney Nash, graduate of 2017, and I am Lynchburg. Thank you for your interest in LCS and for sharing your morning with us. Like and follow the LCS Education Foundation on social media. Grab some literature and a don donation card on your way out. Together we have the power for success. Thank you for all of the ways you invest in LCS. Together we are Lynchburg. Have a great day.